Well, this is like a game show today. Uh, if I hold this up, who do you think our guest might be on today's show? <laughs> <laughs> it's a former executive producer, associate producer, actually, of uh, Let's Make a Deal and many other game shows, too. Writer, producer, uh, actor, uh, voiceover person, general all-around talent, right? Jack of all trades, Jack master of, of none. Master, master. <laughs> oh, you must have mastered a lot. But anyway, Sid Marsh is here today, and he's an interesting person with a great background in show business, and we're going to talk and find out things about his life and to whom he owes money. No, uh, but Sid, <laughs> a long good to, list. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Now, where were you born? I was born in Bakersfield. Bakersfield? Yeah, my, my folks lived in San Francisco, but they went to Bakersfield to have me because my mom had a cousin that was a doctor. She wanted him to deliver. So I could have been born in San Francisco, but I was born in Bakersfield. Well, Bakersfield is kind of a <laughs> status symbol. Yeah, there you, know. you go. If you're in, in country music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But anyway, when you were a young man, you know, late teens or early 20s, what did you aspire to do? You know, when you looked ahead and you said, hey, I'm going to be or I'm going to do this. Well, I always wanted to be a lawyer when I was a kid. When I was a little, t little kid, I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh -huh. But then I got into wanting to be in business. But in, when I got into college, a girlfriend of mine was in, in theater. And so I got into acting, and I started being a theater major. And I realized I'm not going to make any money in, in, in theater. Either you make it really big or, or you're, you're a starving actor. Yeah. But I, I thought, TV, now there's a way. There's a middle ground there. So I got to make some money, and you won't starve. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I, I transferred into the TV department up at University of Oregon, mm -hmm. and in those days they had they had one color camera, and it was probably as big as this desk, and <laughs> yeah, they had the they old black ones. and white, you know, those big RCA, you know, oh, si yeah. 60s, whatever they were, and I decided to transfer to San Francisco State because they, at that time, back in the 70s, it had the uh, the biggest studio, television studio, west of the Mississippi, so I thought, mm -hmm. hey, this is the place to, to sure. you know learn television. So that's where I got my start in TV. And that was in your 20s, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, early okay. 20s. By the way, I do mean to tell you, this, this, actually, this sign that I held up was actually uh, Sid's uh, parking identification. Right, I at mean, Disney this, Studios. This is, this is a metal sign, by the way. <laughs> it showed the permanency it, it, of his job. Not cardboard, and, right. No, it's not paper, plastic, cardboard. It showed that he was had a status symbol, uh, at least in the parking lot. But you know, it was interesting at that, at that job, it was at the Disney Studios down in Orlando, and we would be working at night, and at 9 o'clock at night, you couldn't leave the studio because all the fireworks were going off and everything was raining oh, down, yeah, so we from, were like sequestered for like 9 to 10. We had to write. We couldn't get out. Wow. Now, when... After you left college, I mean, you got your degree then in theater mm -hmm. arts? or No, in, in uh, broadcast communication arts. Okay, then where did you go from there? Went down to L.A. Um, my folks were in Orange County at the time, so I was able to, to get a job with my dad part-time. And what was interesting is the first job I got was with Ralph Edwards Productions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a job because I had a degree in television, and they had never seen somebody with a degree in television at that oh, time. I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> you, but tell the people out there, Ralph Edwards. He oh, was a pioneer. He was a pioneer in, in broadcasting. He had "This Is Your Life," "Let's Make," uh, or "This Is Your Life," uh, "Truth or Consequences." Those were his two big ones. Yeah, even he even uh, was a host on radio too before. Mm, that's television. where it all started. Okay, and then he did that transition into television. Okay, a nice man too. Very nice man. Very nice. Very nice so you guy. went to work for him. What was your first position? I was a gopher. Okay. <laughs> it, it seemed like in those days when when the young kids were coming up, you were either, the, the guys were a gopher and the girls were receptionists. And that's okay. how you got your foot in the door. You had to make coffee, though? Uh, no, I would go, I would literally go for things. I, wanted, okay. I, I would do personal things for Ralph. I would go get his toupee glue for him. I knew, <laughs> I'd get it by the gallon. That's pretty personal. <laughs> okay, then how long did you work for him for a considerable length of time? I, I started as a gopher, worked my way up as a production assistant, and then, then became a writer. I, they, they were auditioning writers. I, I wrote some material. They said, we like it, and, and I made that transition. And that was for Truth or Consequences? Uh, or? No, actually, I was, I was a production assistant on the new produ okay. uh, Truth or Consequences. Well, you were your first writing job was on what? Cro the Crosswits. Crosswits. With Jack Clark. It was like a game, uh, a, uh, a crossword puzzle game show. Okay. Did you have any idea at that time that you, you could write or wanted to write? Um, I, had, I, had, I kind of majored in writing, in television writing in uh, college. Okay. I, I, I did a lot of uh, dramas and comedies and that sort of thing, scripts on spec. Um, and it's funny, when, when we were in college, we were told we had to do a, a project, a video project, and everybody would always grab uh, some kind of record and do a music video. It was like that, that, I think that's where music videos Started, came from, yeah. was college projects. I mean, that, that's all we ever did back in the day. Yeah. Wow. 
but you at that time were you still aspiring to some goal to actually be the executive producer or something or right. have your Sell own, my game own show, show. Or, or be a writer which 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 did you writing writing yeah okay. that, that was my forte and I, I had a teacher it was uh, she she said you know we don't know where television is going to go there's going to be you know cable TV was just coming in there and, but she said there's always going to be need for product and writers yeah. So, I mean, that's a niche to, to, to get into because you'll always need material, they'll always need writers. Well, good writers are always needed, whether yeah. it's television drama, whether it's game shows, whether it's uh, comedy. Sure. Yeah. Have you written, of course, part of Crosswits and some of the game shows you worked on, it really bordered on writing for comedy, huh? Well, we, on Crosswits, they would have like uh, celebrity guests, uh, you know, there'd be like six different celebrities, and they'd be asked questions. Well, we'd always have to come up with a joke answer. And oh. then the real answer, yeah. and and we, I I was the guy that was sitting there giving you know Jamie Farr or whoever you know the the joke yeah. answer, and he had, he had the opportunity to either use that joke, come up with his own joke, or just go for it. Now, were you, was this pretty solitary? Were you doing this kind of by yourself or with a group sitting around a Actually, table? Actually, there was a, a guy, Bob Allen, was my writing partner. It was the two of us. Um, he, he started out as a writer at, uh, at Ralph Edwards Productions, and he kind of took me under his wing, and we wound up kind of becoming partners in, in, in writing. We, they would hire us as a team. Yeah. Um, we, went, we went from Ralph Edwards to Chuck Barris, um, and, and wrote uh, the, the newlywed game, the dating game, and, but, and we, were, we were being groomed to produce it, but yeah. that's about the time it went downhill. <laughs> well, but you worked on, I mean, how many years did you work on game shows overall? I was down in LA for about 13 years, and then wow. I came back to San Francisco and did a game show for another three years there. Uh-huh. Uh, and this, I'll ask you down the road, but now you've been up here about 10 years, yeah. right? Okay. Came up in, uh, yeah, in 2003. What would you say was your best position in L.A., the one you enjoyed the most, uh, was re most remunerative and, and satisfying? Producing The Love Connection. I oh. did that with Chuck Woolery. Chuck I did that Woolery. for three years. And that, that, was, that was the most remunerative. Yeah. And also, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was great for a, a single guy interviewing all these women for <laughs> sending them out on dates and they didn't work well why don't we go out you know that kind of so thing. there were side side benefits oh there's a lot of side benefits yes <laughs> tough life you had <laughs> now what kind of things would you write for love connection what i, I don't rec i remember chuck woolery and and that show but i forget what basically what uh we would we would there'd be well a person would do the selecting there'd be three selectees mm -hmm. um and they would be uh, they would they would select a, a date and go out on the date and come back and, and tell about the date and then the audience it, 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 the, that was really interesting it was the first interactive kind of show because there were little buttons in the audience and they would decide are they going to go out again or not it was, oh, it, are it, they are, suited yeah are they suited or not and then they would find out whether it was a good date or not and uh, if it wasn't uh, then they, they had the opportunity to go out again if they wanted to or not and so we had good dates and bad dates and we really had to engineer it for television Television. Uh, yeah. You know, basically we had, a, you know, there was one of the selectees was going to be the, the best one. There was another one that we would allow them to take, and then there was a third one that if they chose it, we'd say, oh, uh, he left the state, or, you know, he, he's got oh. a girlfriend, or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. In your estimation, with all your experience, what, what game show do you think is the classic game show that, that's been in television history? I mean, people will say like, uh, you know, what's my line? Or they'll say Jeopardy. Or they'll, but what do, you, what do you think is the really classiest and the essence of classiest, the game? Classiest. In fact, Ralph Edwards told me one time, he says, remember, if you're the host of a game show, you're just a traffic cop. You know, exactly. You're, yeah. you're not the star. You are the traffic cop to make, th you're facilitating things. So, but of the game, the essence of the game, what's the best game? Hollywood Square is always, you know, oh, yeah. pokes, you know, pops out at me because uh, it had such a variety and, and, and they could go so many different ways with all the different celebrities. Yeah. I think celebrity shows were really, really important. Yeah, well, Peter Marshall was good hosting that, yeah. too. I mean, other people, Tom Bergeron, a lot of people have done it, but he's, he was excellent. Yeah. And, of course, the people they had, uh, Paul Lind, uh, yeah. George Goebel, mm -hmm. some of the people. I remember somebody asking, it was known that Paul Lind didn't like children. Yes. Very well, yeah. and they said, uh, if you had a young child, you know, and 
uh, where would you put that young child? And he said, on a table. <laughs> <laughs> on a plane to Cleveland, yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or they asked George Goble, if you had a solid block of carbon, what would you have? And he said, a Dodge carburetor. <laughs> So, so you think uh, Hollywood Square? But, but, but remember, there was probably some guy holding up the the joke answer. Yeah. You know, so some of those things. were ad libs and some were written. Exactly. Yeah. Oh boy. Now, uh, for a writer, the challenge is just to keep producing, actually, yeah, funny thing, I mean, creative things. It's it can get arduous, I think. We would we would have a weekly writers conference, uh, and I would have to go in and pitch a hundred different you know, lines or whatever, or, or facts or whatever the, the thing is, and maybe 10 of them would get taken. Yeah. So there, there was a lot of weeding out. Kind of like auditioning for something, you're going to get rejected part, oh, yeah, of, the, yeah. part of the time. Yeah. Now, some but, of the, but we also knew how to sandbag, so if, <laughs> if we had something that was a little risque or whatever, yeah. we, we'd say, uh, we, we'd, we'd pitch it and the, the producer would go, oh, you know, that, we can't put that on TV. And then we'd say, well, what about this? And it'd be really dirty. <laughs> really oh, no, 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 we'll do that <laughs> instead. <you know? laughs> I guess it's a technique to get the something exactly. across. Okay. So you lived down there 13 years, right? Mm -hmm. And while yeah. you were there, you did some announcing and some voiceovers and other things? Yeah, a little bit on the side, yeah. I, I got into that. You were free to do that. Uh -huh. Okay. And did a little acting down there, did some commercials. That's sort uh -huh. of thing. Uh, what did you think uh, about some of the commercials you see nowadays? I mean, some, some are just better than the programs uh, uh, they're better, on. Better than movies. I mean, they're, they're full-length yeah. movies, some of them, yeah. Yeah, to get 30, 30 seconds and a nice little story. That's really good. Yeah. That's what I've always, that's what I think why I got into to, uh, game shows. I've always liked the short form rather than writing a long, you know, movie or book or yeah. whatever. I, I like short stories. I like, you know, very quick kind of thing. Yeah. Were the shows you worked on, were they, some were live, but most were taped? All of them were taped. All were we taped. Yeah, we didn't do any live ones. Okay. Yeah. Getting back to this, I'm just, my mind's working because I, I love game shows. Yeah. Who do you think was the best all time host? of a game show, host or hostess. Boy, that's a tough one. I mean, they're kind of, it goes way back too to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But there's some good people now too. Yeah, I, I, it's funny, I, I have not really followed game shows since the game show channel came on and that sort of thing. And I, yeah. I really, I, it, it was like a whole lifetime ago. I, I have, I have tra transitioned <laughs> so many different times. Well, that's, that shows your talent, though. I mean, you have you know, various things you can do. Because I, 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 I was down doing game shows. I came back to San Francisco, did a game show, um, Claim to Fame, which was kind of a, you know, what's my line kind of thing. And we did that for three years, and they had a new general manager, and she decided to clean slate yeah. all, the, all the different shows. And that's, all of a sudden, I got into uh, multimedia. Um, they were, they were they were doing CD ROMs at the time, and and, and I was doing game shows on CDs. That kind of uh, uh -huh. a, you know, what's this sound kind of thing? You uh, were both producing and hosting, or what? No, I was I was behind the scenes. I was producing writing and writing producing. that sort of okay. thing. And then along came it's funny. Then along came this thing. It was called uh, INTV, Interact, Interactive Network Television. It was just before the, the you know the whole internet came along, yeah. and it was this device you would have. And, and you would watch, uh, you would watch like uh, um, Murder She Wrote, and you could you could play along with it. You know who done it, who you know. We we would write this ahead of time, uh -huh. and it would, it would beam out, and then you'd find out how you st uh, stacked up afterwards. And there was all really a big clunky piece of machinery that you plugged into your phone at the end of the show, and found out if you won or not. Mm -hmm. And that and the, the internet came along and just blew that all away. Uh, apparently, that was to be used at home by. A it, was, it was at home. It was big out at uh, out of the the. Uh, Ballparks, because oh, okay. uh, you could predict plays in football. <laughs> it was all about predicting kind of yeah. things. You you could play. We had we did Je uh, we had uh, Jeopardy, mm -hmm. and we had to do we had to make Jeopardy multiple choice because people had to choose you know yeah. what the answers were, and that's a very hard thing to do is, is make Jeopardy multiple choice. Yeah, it sure is. A lot more work for the writer too. Exactly. Well, that's good. Hey, you brought along some kind of things that tell about uh, about uh, television history here. Uh, let me see if I can get these so we can get a good shot of those and it doesn't reflect. Oh, that's back in the day doing uh, Name That Tune. That's, boy, a big Tom Kent. Why is the cast so large? Well, it's not the cast. That, that's all the behind the scenes people, the writers. Yeah, well, and, well and, I meant the crew and writers and producers. Well, and they, they would get a big pool of contestants. Probably half those people were, were contestant wranglers. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Boy, that's uh, that. Where is Jack Clark? No, this is uh, this Tom is Bob Kennedy. Kelson, no, or, Tom Kennedy's back up there. Oh, Tom. Oh, name that tune. That's right. Yeah. Tom. And he was whose brother? The guy who did. Uh, there was Jack Kennedy. His, 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 not, yeah, not the, Tom not, Kennedy was uh, another television host's brother. Uh, that'll come to me sometime tonight at home. Yeah, that's Bob and myself. That, that we were the writing team. Okay. That was on the set, probably of the Crosswits. Now, what years were this? Was this in the, was probably about uh, seventy-seven. I must say, in the seventy, you look very sixties. <laughs> you know, for his hair and his. But that's, no, that's good. Now, Bob was an interesting guy. He, all his life, all he wanted to be was a game show writer or a game show host. Yeah. He, he, would, he would get his little sister when he was like about 12 to hold cue cards and he would play host, game oh, show wow. host as a 12 year old. Did he end up doing any hosting or he well, stayed he, a writer? He, he was a writer, he became a producer. Unfortunately, he died many years ago. Oh, a fairly young age. At a fairly young age, Oh, yeah. that's too bad. Now, who are these folks? Well, that's Bob. That um, and uh, oh, Bruce Bellin. Bruce Bellin and in then the myself. Center. Yeah, Bruce Bellin was with the Four Preps. Yeah, he's a good singer. Very good singer. And we were we were getting group. ready to do a bit. We always did all these bits in front of the audience yeah. to, to warm them up. We we'd, we'd do the well, and we were ready to do a bit. Yeah, for anybody uh, out there who hasn't been into the studio uh, for especially entertainment shows and, and game shows or something like uh, uh, Kelly and Michael or something. You know, the, when the audience comes out and they're like in a frenzy, well, that's that's what the people <laughs> warming up the audience have, and this have is, caused. This is us getting in a frenzy. That's that's getting into the middle of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's funny. It was always the same routines, yeah. show after show. Yeah. And, but it's a new audience, and they all love it. Well, who was the guy who used to do the warm ups for Truth or Consequences when Bob Barker was doing it? Uh, and it got the audience all the time. It says, now turn around and shake hands with the person behind exactly. you. And exactly. And of course, you turn around, the other person had turned around. Right. Uh, <laughs> you can't, and the, the last guy is shaking the wall. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. the Crosswitz. That's Jack Clark, the yeah. host up there. Yeah. The taller. Yeah, in the back. Okay. And Bruce Bellin down on the floor again. Oh, boy. You, I guess you had a lot of fun on game shows, I would think. It was a lot I of mean, fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's good now. Oh, this is the new Truth or Consequences. I was uh, working the audience with a gorilla. Yeah. That's, that's not one of those dates you met in the audience. No. <laughs> yeah, right. And I am the one on the right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, the one, one without, the, without the hair on the body. There you go. Okay. Gee, that's, that's good. And let's see. This is... Same oh, here's the, here's the gorilla sitting in the audience. Yeah. That was the same thing. Yeah. That, that must be great fun. Well, I would think, too, people on game shows have a certain attitude of fun where there's not the controversy or some of the clashes that might be in dramatic oh, shows. There could be politics on any show. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> basically, you're in good spirits, though, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, game shows, you're really dealing with the public a lot because of contestants. Yeah. So you, you really have to, you know, be kind of friendly towards the, the folks. And There's kind of an art to picking contestants, mm -hmm. too, especially if they're picked the day of the show huh, and mm -hmm. brought, brought down from the audience, like on The Price is Right. Right, uh, or Let's you know, Make a Deal or yeah. one of those kind of things, yeah. It seems like contestants are much more, uh, speaking of frenzies, I mean, they're, they're much more demonstrative than they used to be. You know, the, the, it's all television. It's all for the art or for the, the, the entertainment value. It's not make-believe, is it? It's, I mean, it's, there, there is like, it's a lot of make-believe it's, it's make in the yeah. sense, like audiences, we would you know, get the people are all lined up, but we'd know the ones that we kind of want to pick when I was doing Let's Make a yeah, Deal. Certain personality. And they're, they're put in certain places where we know Monty's going to go and pick them, that kind of yeah. thing. Wow. What did you think of Bob Barker as a host? And of course, he hosted Truth or Consequences and Price is Right for right. many years. I didn't, I, I didn't get actually work with him um, as a gopher with Ralph Edwards. I, I went to his home a lot. I, I yeah. met him on a personal level, but I never really worked with him in the studio yeah. that way. But when you saw he was him, a little bit before my time. When you saw him on the air, since you, you've oh. seen him a few times. He's, he is one of the consummate hosts. As yeah, you I think saying. he's yeah. so smooth, and he had a way of uh, saying something negative or putting somebody down in a fun way that didn't offend exactly. anybody. Uh, that, that's the key, yeah. yeah. There's an art to that. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Anyway, getting back to some of your artifacts, you don't have a museum, do you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this Actually, I just found all this in a box. I'll, this, this, I'll this, uh, and, this is an old crawl. This is, maybe. this is before computers. This is the way that, that we would do the, uh, the credits at the end. Yeah. It was a chroma key because it's black. You could get rid of that, and it would go on a... On a on a kind of a, a, a conveyor belt around. So then it just rolls down to Bob Hilton. And yeah. There. And, way, and way down here, <laughs> down. way down here I have, there we go, somewhere in here. There, oh, there we go, Sid Marsh, production staff. This was one of the first ones. Oh, okay. Right here, yeah. But this would be on a roll. Huh? On a roll. Yeah. And then, and then what was kind of nice, they would take them and laminate them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me see if this is... Oh, just like this, huh? Right. It's, it's this shrunken down, laminated. That's the full crawl. And what would they do? Keep this uh, a wall hanging? Or? Yeah. That, we would get presented those at the end of the season. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I have like three or four of those on a wall at home. Wow. That's, that's really good. Now, what in the world brought you up to this after, you know, certainly a successful career uh, writing, producing, some well, acting, voiceovers, announcing. What brought you to the mother load? I wound up getting into IT, uh -huh. um, and I used to come up. I used to come up to Arnold every summer. I'd, I'd loved camping, and I would go to this certain lake, and, and, and I really enjoyed going up there. And I was working at this law firm. I'd been, been working there for about five years or something, and I got laid off. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go up to. I'm going to go live where I want to live. Yeah. And, I, and I, went, I came up to. Arnold and has been there 10 but years. But you're working at the law firm as you were still doing some showbiz things? No, just a little acting on the side. Oh, okay. I, I was doing uh, industrials and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, they're certainly remunerative, too. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. But I, I, was, I was the IT manager for a law firm that had five different offices, so I made sure they were networked from L.A., Sacramento, San Francisco, so I was flying around a lot. Okay, when you say IT, you mean... Yeah, information technology, oh, okay. networking, that okay. sort of thing. Yeah. See, I'm very slow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, well, that's, that's interesting. So you've been here, what, about 10 years now? I've been here 10 years. Um, I, w I, I was doing IT for a company up in Arnold um, uh -huh. and then got laid off. And, and I've, I've got, it's funny, when I, came to the, when I came to the mountains, what I found that I got, I got involved in the community. When I was in the Bay Area or L.A. or whatever, I really didn't care about the community that much. But yeah. up in the mountains, I really got involved, and so I'm on all these boards, and I wound up becoming Parks and Rec Commissioner for the yeah. county. And, and then you're working on the Evans Pass Visitor Center. That's the newest thing. We are yeah. going to be, uh, my, my partner, Kate O'Keefe, and myself, we've started this Ebbets Pass Visitor Center up in Arnold. It's at 830 Highway 4. Uh, there's going to be a grand opening uh, May 31st, uh, mm -hmm. or excuse me, uh, Memorial Day, or weekend, Saturday. I think it's the 27th. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, basically we see a need to, to kind of grow the economy up there. We, we want to help uh, all the businesses, the nonprofits, the artists. Kind of our, our beat is Murphy's to Markleyville. Is yeah. what we want to kind of really promote that That's whole. High now, how much time does it take to be the commissioner of Parks and Rec? You have uh, various meetings and things. Oh yeah! Like that. In this fact, I'm your... going to meetings shortly after this. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that does take considerable yeah. amount of time. We, we there is no there is no true Parks and Rec commission right now. Our our dictum is to create a commission. We're we're in the process of trying to figure out a funding mechanism. There's a, the TOT that we may get involved with yeah. to to get this Parks and Rec commission going. Oh, so that'll be good. So yeah, I know that the who's the fellow who heads GABA. Uh, oh, Bob Hill, uh, Bob Doton. Yeah, he was on the show uh, mm -hmm. uh, a whole couple months ago, and uh, he seems pretty energetic and uh, yeah. There's a whole eager different to energy promote to the Arnold area uh -huh. and uh, to make it more of a destination. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, some of the acting you're doing around here for Stage Three, what type of characters have you been playing? I've played a variety. I, I played uh, the bad priest in Doubt. Uh, that was a lot of fun. How did you research that? Uh, well, I had, <laughs> I had nine years of Catholic school. <laughs> oh, okay. But you knew some good ones and some bad ones. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, I did A Thousand Clowns, oh, yeah. which was a, a lot of fun. Uh, just did uh, something last year called Superior Donuts. And usually I've, I've either played kind of light comedy or a romantic lead or something, but this one I got to play the heavy. I, I, I was the bad guy. And, I, and we actually had a, a, a three-minute fight scene on, on stage. That oh. it, it, was a, it was great because it was like a ballet. It was all choreographed just right. And the second to the last night, 
the guy I was I was fighting, he moved his head the wrong way, and I actually clocked him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He didn't have to come back for a later scene, did he? Uh, well, he had to come back the next day, and in previous in previous performances, he had to put on makeup after the fight. Oh, yeah. This time, he had to have makeup on and wipe it off. Oh, oh gee. <laughs> but it was the last performance. Uh, it didn't get around that you never did like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's good. So you plan on doing some more acting up here? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah. Have you done anything uh, like uh, branched out to like Murphy's Creek Theater or Sierra uh, Repertory? Did, or? Actually, I, I've done some plays down at Murphy's Creek. Uh, just just did an interesting uh, movie over in, in Sonora. There's a, there's a lady that has a, a old west town on her property, uh -huh. and we, we shot about a 15 minute western. Oh, and, and I was a bartender. That was a lot of fun. That must be a lot yeah. of fun. Well, it's good. Do like, you consider yourself kind of semi-retired at a young age, or, or? Oh, I'm I'm working retired. <laughs> You're working retired. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I didn't know. Of course, uh, up here it depends on on the union side, or if it's non-union or union, whether you can work. Or right. Can't. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, but uh, Sierra Repertory, you have to be an equity member, or you don't have to be. Um, they're, they're allowed to uh, cast two or three locals, but they're, they are an equity house. Okay. Yeah. And, they, they, and they get a lot of people from L.A. and that sort of thing. They put on some really good shows. Uh -huh. And of course, Very good as, as Stage 3 does, too. Yeah. But Stage 3, for people who haven't been there, it's, it's, it's a, a small theater. What, 99 or? Uh, 87 seats. 87 seats. But it's theater in the round, yeah, which is really it's, nice. Uh, it's thrust. We had seen the Fantastics there, and it's, it's a really nice way to watch a Very intimate. Show. Yeah. yeah. So... Well, well, now that I know what you're doing, that you're, that you're when you're off the streets <laughs> and not doing things for parks and recreation. But thanks for bringing all these things in. Yeah. And I must say, uh, of all the guests we've had, I'm most impressed by your parking sign. <laughs> okay, well, I, I pushed you over the edge. Good. <laughs> That's right. Anything <laughs> you think of interest, just about game shows in general, that, that people might want to hear uh, how they're put together or... They they are they are constructed totally for entertainment purposes and and um, it, it's not whether you know it's right or wrong or whatever is it funny is it interesting is yeah. there pathos is there comedy you know yeah. and it, what, what's also funny is people would say you were a game show writer I thought the host came up with all that yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't yeah. realize there's a whole staff behind the whole thing they think the hosts are just very witty guys yeah, well some of them are yeah. But I never thought Bob Eubanks was. <laughs> no, no. He was but, a little stiff. Yeah, a little bit. But it was a good concept. You, you know, know who was a great, great host was Betty White. I worked oh, on a show sure. with her. Yeah. Uh, it was called Just Men, Her and Nine Young Guys. And it, She's she, still great. She is. At her age. Yeah, Sid, it's good to see you. Well, thank you. And uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, best of luck in all your activities. Okay. Good. And we'll see you next time on uh, Calaveras Living. <laughs>